Hello everyone, my name is Mrinal Kuteri. I was joined AIR1 in NEET UG 2021. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about your most important uh, resource during your NEET preparation journey. It should be the one that you will refer most frequently and the one that you should be uh, as thorough with as humanly possible for you. So if you haven't guessed already, I'm talking about NCRT. Uh, in this video, I'll talk a little bit about uh, NCRT physics and how to deal with that. So first things first, yes, NCRT physics is a must. A lot of people seem like whenever I say that NCRT is a must or when people understand that NCRT is a must, they often follow it up with the question, is physics also necessary? And it absolutely is. It's true that much of physics is numerical and practical. So in that aspect, NCRT is not exactly your ideal companion. But it's those 10-15 questions which are theoretical in nature, in neat, that you know can very well make the difference for you. And if you've noticed, I um, I personally felt that in recent years, uh, neat is showing this trend of moving towards a slightly more theoretical paper than a practical one. So you know the the theory questions, you know, based on which statement is correct, and just based on you know hard facts, not much of calculation required there, those become that much more important. So uh, I'll take you through the 11th and 12th class physics book separately and tell you how to deal with each section individually, okay? So first thing, good news, I've seen that the syllabus has reduced, the books look half their size right now. So that means there's less for you to cover and it also means you can cover the syllabus that much more efficiently and that much more thoroughly. So let's talk about uh, part 1 of class 11 physics. So if you look at the syllabus, it is uh, hasn't changed much I think. It, yeah, it is still completely based on mechanics, they just removed the first chapter physically. So, this uh, part one of physics class 11 is the whole of mechanics right basically and in my personal opinion out of all the physics textbooks this is the textbook i'm not talking ncrt specifically here but in general ncrt uh, i'm talking about physics mechanics is the part that you should be extremely thorough with you should have it down to the t uh, because these concepts that you learn in mechanics are going to be applied as you go forward in all the remaining chapters of physics also in 11th as well as 12th. Uh, mechanics is quite fundamental to understanding physics. So therefore I would say that you know whenever when you're charting a plan for uh, whether be it, you know covering your uh, syllabus for the first time or revision ensure that you've devoted a sufficient chunk of time for mechanics okay. So first chapter units and measurement this is I mean, one of the easier topics to understand, much of it you already know and the chapter doesn't look particularly long either. So this is a chapter that you don't have to go beyond NCRT, you can uh, focus very much on this and cover it. Uh, get some practice from outside NCRT if possible because uh, dimensional analysis and all can require some practice initially. Uh, from here on, we move to motion in a straight line and motion in a plane. Um, motion in a plane. These uh, are very very fundamental chapters because within mechanics these are fundamental I'm saying because uh, the equations that you derive in motion in a straight line and motion in a plane you're going to apply in the other chapters of mechanics as well. So these are also the chapters of mechanics that tend to be used very commonly for theoretical questions okay because motion is straight line motion plane they ask questions about uh, you know uniform speed uniform acceleration uh, distance displacement these definitions and a lot of these things okay so these two chapters particularly i would say that you should have read ncrt multiple times and uh, whenever you see um, any, anything talking about when a body is moving with uniform speed for example its acceleration may not be zero uh, i don't know where it is in this book i'm sure it's there somewhere uh, but if a body is moving with uniform velocity its acceleration is zero so these are small theoretical lines you know just scattered here and there in these chapters and they make all the difference because 
these are the questions which most commonly show up in the theoretical you know which of the following statements are correct kind of questions so whenever you come across these highlight them underline them if you're maintaining a sort of a notebook to um, for quick revision purposes then write these down in your notebook and make this a habit because when you read this chapter again from ncrt these are the things that you're going to focus the most on okay uh same with motion in a plane and aside from that there's a lot of equations of motion which have been derived in these chapters so all of those you can make quick note of it in your notebook or just highlight the um, end result of uh, the final equation though i would say that when you're reading ncrt one good thing about ncrt is a lot many of these formula ha are have been derived and the thing about this is physics can get a little overwhelming at times because there's so many formula and You're already reading chemistry and biology. That's already so uh, memory intensive. So if you understand the derivation, you won't have to memorize those formulae. You'll understand them, and you'll be capable of deriving them as well. So coming to laws of motion, this is a very important chapter. Lots of equations, lots of questions. Friction is one particular topic in this that tends to have theoretical questions, and sometimes circular motion as well. So. This is a chapter that you should be quite thorough with. Aside, oh, laws of motion themselves also have a lot of theoretical questions based on it. So this is a chapter that you should be quite thorough with. Okay, and then moving on, work energy, power, uh, work energy, power, conservative, non-conservative forces, the definitions of potential energy. These are all very important. So I mean, you might have noticed I'm talking a lot about the theoretical aspects because that is the place. That is the uh you know kind of question for which ncert becomes your most important resource because almost everyone is also following some other textbook or some other video lecture series or whatever it is to learn physics and, and those tend to be more exhaustive than ncert which is good for understanding physics but for the theoretical aspect of it it is ncert that is your best friend so that's why i am focusing a lot more on that about elastic and elastic collisions uh, what are the quantities that are conserved in these collisions so these you can note down or highlight it in this uh one other thing you can do with ncert physics is that if there's any new formula that you've learned uh, from any other source that you're referring you can note it down in this as well so that when you're reading ncert you uh, kind of revise those extra formula as well so system of particles and rotational motion this is one of the bigger chapters that i took me a very long time to learn so this is a chapter that will take time but also you should uh, it's a good chapter to read because all the concepts there's a lot of new concepts which are introduced in this chapter basically and those are explained quite well and they've been broken down and they've taken the time to explain it at length so in ncert physics if there's any concept that you have not been able to understand from the other source that you are uh referring to you should give it a try reading it from ncert there's a chance that you might understand it better from here yeah. and the uh, moments of inertia and uh, center of mass and all that is given in tables in concise tables in ncert good for revision purposes once again though you'll mostly have it memorized by the time you're done with preparation uh gravitation gravitation has very stat formula and very um constantly recurring questions and uh, formula and concepts that appear so uh, you can read it from this the kepler's laws and everything uh aside from that they used to be weightless as well for me so <clears throat> gravitation is a chapter that because they don't usually explore it too much outside the realm of ncert it's good to read it from ncert because it's obviously going to be more concise than whatever else you're referring and it will help you uh, achieve syllabus completion moving on to part 2 part 2 deals with the non mechanics part of it mechanical properties of solids fluids matter thermodynamics kg uh, kinetic theory etc so oscillations and waves particularly i remember those were topics that used to be covered in qu uh, quite in depth uh, when i was going for coaching and i used to refer to ncert to uh, know what were the uh, formula and concepts that i had to focus on and i had to ensure that i had it down perfectly 
mechanical properties of solids and fluids they have uh, the, the because they deal with objects at rest a lot there's some definitions related to um, laws etc which um, are quite useful and therefore uh, can um, be form the basis for theory questions so for that you can uh, reference CRT uh, make notes of it when you're reading NCRT for physics in general your notes should be more based on theory and writing down the end um, final equations of formulae because it's just it's for, for revision purposes mainly thermal properties of matter is something that I think by now you might have already covered it in chemistry because there's a chapter on thermodynamics in chemistry so some of it might uh, overlap with the thermodynamics of physics so maybe you'd have your basics done already thermal properties of matter is quite different so uh, radiation convection conduction the modes of heat transfer they can be uh, quite theoretical in nature so their NCRT becomes a good source to quickly revise it thermodynamics um, it's I think covered to some extent in chemistry though aside from that you can uh, the, the few extra things that have not been covered there you can cover from this thermodynamics has a lot of uh, definitions for different kinds of processes so for that NCRT is quite useful uh, kinetic theory has a uh, few formulae to use and all of them are given in NCRT so again good for quick revision waves and oscillations these are the two chapters that I found a little difficult and that's why I used to keep coming back to NCRT to know what was important and what I had to cover for sure because anything that's in NCRT is by definition very important for your preparation so coming to 12th I think part 1 part 1 mainly deals with electromagnetism so electric charges and fields, electrostatic potas uh, potential and capacitance, current electricity the first two cha uh, chapters electric charges and fields and potential and capacitance again they have some definitions and all uh, related associated with them so reading the chapter can be quite useful these are relatively big chapters as I can see in NCRT but it's worth uh, taking the time and effort to read them uh, current electricity again it's a chapter that uh, I personally at least had explored a lot more than is given in this but then it's useful to know what is important and to cover the theory that's a kind of a recurring theme of reading NCRT physics if you notice uh, moving charges and magnetism and uh, magnetism and matter moving charges and magnetism is again uh, involves a lot of uh, practicals and numericals so you may be reading it from elsewhere but magnetism and matter is something that has quite some um, quite some theory associated with it so NCRT becomes all the more important paramagnetism, ferromagnetism etc so these are things that you can best understand from NCRT uh, electromagnetic induction is again um, it's a very numerical chapter Alternating current. Alternating current is the one chapter that I understood better when I read it from NCRT than from other sources because the formulae has been derived quite well here. And even if I was not able to uh, under, uh, memorize, uh, not memorize, uh, if I, even if I was incapable of deriving the formula myself, I understood the derivation completely when I read it from here. And it was given in a slightly more dumbed down way in, alter, in NCRT than other books. So I found it a little easier to understand. So that was the example I was referring to. <clears throat> Electromagnetic waves is again quite theoretical, so NCRT becomes your best friend there. And coming to part two, finally, that deals with more of modern physics. So modern physics and optics, yes. So ray optics, wave optics. Uh, in wave optics, diffraction, polarization, etc., and uh, tend to and optical instruments. Yes. These can these are quite useful to read from NCRT. I used to read it more from NCRT than other sources because I found it easier to understand here. And chapters 11 through 14, basically as soon as you come to modern physics, for these chapters NCRT is indispensable. Dual nature of radiation, atoms, nuclei, semiconductors, these tend to be very theoretical and the good news is that you would have covered a lot of it in structure of an atom in chemistry but for everything else <clears throat> there's a lot of theory associated with it about scientist names discoveries etc 
experiments like in atoms and nuclei so for that ncrt is the best and i think for these chapters i would even go as far as to say that ncrt alone also might just prove to be sufficient for your exam semiconductors was a chapter that i struggled with a lot and i read it from other materials but i could not understand it so finally i just read what was in ncrt and focused on getting that right and it worked out quite well for me in the end <clears throat> so uh, that's it i have spoken about all the chapters roughly in physics 11th and 12th the recurring theme here is that you focus a lot on the theoretical points and for quick revision of all the important formula because if you formalize in ncrt physics it means you need to be perfect with it so thank you i hope this video was useful